buongiorno from the Sicilian Secret Diet Plan. Sandra Camarata, MD. I'm a child and adolescent psychiatrist and a chef. And this is my husband. I'm Giovanni Campanile, MD. I'm a uh, cardiologist uh, and nutritional cardiologist. And uh, both Sandra and I, in our practices, we use nutrition as a foundation of our patient treatments. And one of the reasons why we wrote the book, The Sicilian Secret Diet Plan, because it's based on the Mediterranean diet, which has been shown to be very beneficial for health. And this is the Sicilian version of the Mediterranean diet. It offers the greatest variety of uh, recipes because Sicily, as you know, has been conquered by so many different populations and every population has left a little bit of their history behind and mostly the culinary history behind. So we're gonna explore today how to make simple meat recipes and of course, a lot of the vegetables that we use all the time. Again, very simply, quickly, deliciously fast. So we're going to start roasting the bell peppers today. Beautiful colors. Every color of the fruits and vegetables that we eat tell us that they have different nutrients and different vitamins. So that's why we're attracted by the colors and the spring and the summer brings to us all of this. So let's start roasting our peppers. And what so, do we want to eat peppers? So peppers and eggplants and uh, zucchini, the colors of these uh, vegetables are very important. Every color has a different uh, function in health. These are, the, the, the colors are carotenoids. The bell peppers are part of the nightshade family of uh, plants like chili peppers, uh, cayenne pepper, and uh, tomatoes. These are all uh, carotenoids. And they, the carotenoids are very important for a whole slew of health benefits, including antioxidants, they're anti-inflammatory, they reduce cholesterol, and they, uh, they're just great for health. So this is why we recommend number one, the rainbow of colors, as you can see, the rainbow of colors, every color is important and different, and to eat these on a regular and frequent basis. So we're gonna start putting our bell peppers for, onto the grill, and while bell peppers grill, we're going to start working on our eggplants and zucchini. Here we go. Now, it is important for you to know that we can also put the peppers in the oven. And uh, that will be easy too. So if you don't have a grill, if it's raining outside, if you don't have an inside grill, just put them in the oven. 375 degrees, just keep an eye, turn them around, and it will work perfectly fine. So another great health benefit of uh, the peppers is their content of lutein and zeaxanthin. These are um, very important for eye health. And as we all have been using more and more cell phones and, uh, and computers, what they have protect particularly is against blue light because they absorb blue light and they get absorbed by the retina. And so they protect your eyes from things like macular degeneration, from uh, loss of eyesight. So very important for a whole slew of health benefits, but particularly eye health. And also remember, like we said, ingredients do matter. So try to use organic vegetables in the farmer's market as much as you can because some of the pesticides that are used, actually they're hormone interrupters, they disruptors, they disrupt the hormones. So especially if you're working on fertility, uh, you really want to make sure that there are no pesticides. So another important health benefit of uh, peppers is the carotenoids are insoluble in water. So they travel in our bloodstream in the lipoprotein. Lipoprotein is the uh, molecule that carries cholesterol. And what's fascinating is that the higher the carotenoid content of the lipoprotein, the less oxidized the bad cholesterol or the LDL cholesterol becomes. So it lowers the risk of atherosclerosis, heart disease, and major complications such as heart attacks and strokes. 
Food is medicine. Now we're gonna start with our eggplants. We're gonna roast our eggplants. What I like to do is not to take all the skin out. Uh, I'm gonna take just a little bit. And you'll see with, when summer uh, comes uh, later, you'll see that the skin is actually gonna be even softer than it is. So it's okay to leave it. I just like doing this. It's actually a good idea to leave some of it or most of it because many of the carotenoids are in the skin. So the skin is a very healthy part of the uh, vegetable. So sometimes it's a little bit tough though. So if we can eliminate some, it's easier to eat it when you eat it, not to have it in your teeth um, that much. So we're gonna do the preparation for the grilling of our eggplants. And you'll see when we prepare it with our garlic, salt, pepper, olive oil, parsley, and um, basil, you're gonna, we're gonna create a super food, excellent as a side dish for anything you wanna prepare. And of course, we're gonna prepare meat today, so excellent side dish, or alone with the roasted zucchini, roasted bell peppers, and we can make sandwiches and or eat it just like this. So it can stay in the refrigerator, we'll see for about five days. So keep it there, make a lot, and serve it for your family and for yourself deliciously throughout the week. So eggplants are another powerful food that, uh, you know, again, rich color, and that color always signifies high content of carotenoids. Um, it's a rich source of fiber, potassium, vitamin K, and we always talk about this antioxidant um, effect of the substances like carotenoids. And what this means is the, our, our bodies are very metabolically active, every cell in our body, and we, re, and we create these things called reactive oxygen species. These are oxygen compounds that are damaging to our DNA. And the carotenoids offset that, uh, that reactive oxygen species, so that's why they're called antioxidants, which is a very important thing because our DNA is so important for our, 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 our life. And eggplants, if I remember correctly, uh, has a little bit of uh, nicotine in it, it right? And nicotine that... in small amounts is actually good for cognition. And so <clears throat> it's a plant that has a little bit of nicotine in it. And that's why a lot of people enjoy smoking because it actually helps with focusing and concentration. And there was a time they started uh, researching nicotine as a, a attention deficit disorder medication, and then they gave that up. But because people that do smoke, they can focus and concentrate much better, and of course, don't take it as a, as a promotion of smoking by any means. Um, the health uh, negative effects are way too many. So, but just know that the nicotine in the eggplants actually is a good, nicotine that can help with focusing and concentration and cognition. And, and many of these uh, substances like beta car uh, carotene uh, can convert into vitamin A. So these are uh, very important precursors of vitamin A. Vitamin A is very important. What's interesting is that uh, supplemental beta, car beta carotene is not that beneficial. Studies have shown that in, that uh, for heart disease, for instance, the carotenoids in these vegetables reduce heart disease, but supplemental carotenoids don't. And, uh, and in patients that are smokers or have been exposed to asbestos, in fact, supplemental carotenoids have been shown to be deleterious. They can cause lung cancer, as opposed to uh, the food itself reduces lung cancer. So it's, we feel that it's better to get these nutritional components from food rather than supplements. Always, right? And I think this is a very important piece of information because a lot of people take supplements. And they take supplements because someone else has told them that is a good thing, right? Taking supplements helps vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin D. We'll talk, we, we have spoken extensively in our podcast about all the supplements, uh, good and bad, what to take and what not to take. So I would recommend for you to listen to that. But this is important information. Before you take any supplements, just talk to your doctor. Not all supplements are good, except for these. These are always good, good source of supplements.
Yeah, there's a misconception sometimes that if a little bit is good, more is better, and that's not always the case. And that's why high dose supplements may not always be in your best interest. And we, again, we promote nutrition from food, and this is the best nutrition. And our bodies can understand if you're getting vitamins from food or if you're getting, getting vitamins for supplements and knows how to use best all the vitamins and minerals that we, and fibers, of course, that we take from food, foods and, and fruits and vegetables in particular. And this is because we've evolved with the plants around us. So our bodies are, are preconditioned to absorb these nutrients as opposed to other things that may be artificial that we aren't set up to absorb. So this is, uh, you know, our bodies have a, uh, an, a way to understand, you know, this nutritional intelligence to understand what nutrients are good for us, how to absorb them, and where they go into our bodies. And interesting enough is also our body gets, they get ready to use the nutrition based on the season that we're in. So our body now, spring is here, are getting ready to take in the nutrition that these vegetables that come in spring and summer bring us. Time to turn the peppers. They're roasting. Now we turn them around. Look at this. Getting them ready, because then we're gonna have to peel them. The smell is unbelievable. <laughs> It smells like roasted peppers. And it's interesting, when you walk into Sicily, Naples, where our families are from, um, summertime comes, every single house smells like roasted peppers. So you're walking down the streets, the balconies, the windows are open, and the smell of roasted peppers is pretty much everywhere on the streets. It, it really sounds like a, a feast um, that is happening in every household during the summer at, at the same time. And this is the concept of eating seasonally. You know, our bodies also are getting ready for seasonal foods, and it's always better to eat fruits and vegetables and foods in season because the food has a higher nutritional content, and our bodies are actually ready to receive those foods better in season than out of season. Now... As, as you can see, her dish is getting smaller and smaller. Our zucchinis are left for last, but not because they're less nutritious than the other vegetables. Actually, zucchini have a lot of nutrition content. And the zucchini, again, very colorful vegetable, and it's uh, also high content of the theme today is carotenoids. And these carotenoids are, again, very healthy, they're anti-inflammatory, they're antioxidant. And specifically, the um, zucchinis have both soluble and insoluble fiber. And these fibers are very important for gut health. Um, they help the transit time of our stools, which is an important feature. They help release gastric juices, which help digestion. And they also help feed the, all the healthy bugs in our gut, the microbiome, because they help the gut create short-chain fatty acids, which are important components for our overall health and for the health of the gut. So zucchini is also a great summer vegetable that you can use for many different preparations. And today we're gonna roast them together with the eggplants and uh, with the roasted bell peppers. So you're gonna see how versatile this vegetable is and how often can be used in many different preparations. They also have a very high content of pectin, and pectin is another type of fiber. And pectin is uh, very useful to naturally lower cholesterol, it helps lower blood sugar, and also has very good anti-cancer properties. So again, all these components of these foods are used and on a regular basis really helps improve health. And also, again, with summer coming, we're gonna be exposing our skin to the sun. All these vegetables, including tomatoes, can help actually to prevent sunburn and to keep our skin healthy 
Um, so lots of benefit. And that is why it's so important to eat in seasons, because if we miss eating these vegetables, uh, we don't get the skin glow or the protection from the sun that these vegetables can actually give us. In fact, uh, eggplant extracts have been used in multiple studies to actually treat non-melanoma non skin cancer. So uh, with excellent results. So it's, uh, you know, again, these, these are really powerful. Food, food is medicine or actual medicines from the food. So the bell peppers are ready, as you can see. You're gonna let them rest a little bit. You can use a pot. You can use actually a paper bag. You can put it in there. The steam is gonna keep them cooking them. And in a little bit, they're gonna be ready for us to easily peel them and start putting our condiments on. Our beautiful eggplants and zucchini are ready. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the, the perfect condiment for us to, like I said, to keep it refrigerated, to eat it with uh, meals, great uh, for fish, great for meat, and great for just a beautiful sandwich to have. So here, our eggplants, we're gonna sprinkle with salt a little bit of red pepper, if you like it. If you don't, then just regular pepper or not. And we're gonna sprinkle with organic balsamic vinegar. You can also use it just the regular red vinegar that, that will go perfectly, because in Sicily didn't have balsamic vinegar. They just uh, used the uh, red um, wine vinegar. And we're gonna sprinkle with some garlic, some parsley, I'm sorry, basil, not parsley, and always olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, the perfect fat uh, for our meal. Then we're gonna keep on layering. You can use the zucchini layer, you can mix it, eggplant and zucchini. Beautiful. And, and uh, the way it looks is beautiful, right? So we want uh, for our eyes to eat the dish too. That is very important. It becomes very appealing when we do that. So again, a little bit of salt, a little bit of red pepper, if you like it or not, a little bit of basil, fresh basil. I just got it from outside from my plants garlic, always lots of garlic. It keeps your arteries clean, antiviral, antifungal, uh, really one of the best superfoods that we have. The same thing with basil, perfect superfood. A little bit of vinegar and always extra virgin olive oil. Tell me if you don't feel like you want to just eat this right now. So now we're going to go to our meat. As if you read our book, you know that we recommend meat only occasionally, about three ounces of meat once a week, maybe less if you can, because of the kind of fats that the meat has. Although meat has other important nutrients that we'll talk about it, and that's why um, 
Giovanni is here. And uh, we're going to also understand what kind of meat is the meat you want to buy to eat. And especially if you want to feed your, your children any meat, is information that is very important. Ingredients do matter. So meat is a part of the Mediterranean diet, the Sicilian Mediterranean diet. And it, uh, but the concept of this type of eating is that you eat meats in, uh, not frequently, and you eat a lot of fish, a lot of vegetables, and uh, most Legumes of- Legumes or grains. Like protein can be sourced from plants or animal protein. Uh, but meat does have an important function in this way of eating because there are certain nutrients you can only get from meat, uh, like vitamin B12, for instance. It, uh, and then there's iodine and selenium and taurine, all important nutrients that have important functions in our body, like preventing heart disease, but in small quantities because meats have saturated fats and too much saturated fat is not good. So you want to have this good balance of the good fats, like monounsaturated, polyunsaturated fats, a little bit of saturated fat, not zero, and a lot of plants and that sort of thing. So the, the concept of eating meat uh, occasionally is, is good for your health because of these essential nutrients that you get from meat. Although you don't have to eat meat to be healthy. You just have to make sure that you supplements the vitamin B12 that you can get in most other foods that meat. So it's a not necessary food item, but has also its benefits if you eat it a little bit at a time. Now, now the, the downside of some sort of things about meat are, one, if they're overcooked, cooked, uh, burned or charcoal grilled meat, the charcoal part of it, uh, too much and too high quantity can cause cancer. And then there's a new thing that we've discovered recently called TMAO, uh, trimethylamine N oxide, which is a compound that if you eat things like meat and uh, chicken and too much of that, it changes the gut microbiome in your gut. And this substance called TMAO increases, and that can double your risk of heart disease. So too much meat, again, is not a good idea, but small amounts of meat are okay. So Today we're gonna to make baked cutlets. So we're gonna use similar ingredients as if you were making cutlets. We're gonna eliminate the egg in it, and we're gonna, instead of the egg, we're gonna use extra virgin olive oil for our fat for the meat. So interesting enough, in Southern Italy, in Sicily in particular, uh, beef was not a meat that was available. You know, just in Northern Italy, beef was uh, available. So goats and uh, pigs and chickens were available. And, but people used, needed, needed uh, the, the animals for their cheeses so they could sell. They needed the chickens for the eggs so they could sell it. So they ate only the animals when they became old and the meat was tough. So what do they need to do? they needed to pound it. So the, that would, the pounding of the meat would tenderize the, the meat and make it more edible. Or they ground it to create uh, meatballs, to create polpette, to put in the sauces in, on Sunday for Sunday dinner. They also had goats and they tenderized the, the meat by putting the marinade so lots of lemon, a lot of, lot of lemons, but also uh, wine or vinegar to make the, the meat more tender. So today we're going to pound the meat as if we were back in Sicily eating the old meat. And the reason why we're doing that today is not to make the meat tender because it is, but we're going to do it to make it thinner. So. In, especially in the South Italy, all the meat portions were very small. But once you pound them, they become larger, thin and larger. So at dinner, when we had meat, was una fettina di carne, like a very small amount of meat. It wasn't even called like a full 
a meat steak, but was a fettina, was a smaller amount of meat. And uh, all the vegetables were the main course. The meat was just a small amount. Yeah, so the meat, uh, the concept is that meat is added for taste more than actual, you know, large amounts, with Cassandra said. But, and this is because there are certain things in meat that can be both good and bad for you. For instance, nitrate is in meat. A nitrate in your body can be converted into a bad thing, nitrites, which can cause cancer, or nitric oxide, which is a good thing. So too much of this substance can be bad, but a small amounts can be excellent for you because nitric oxide is very good for your arteries and, and your heart health. So this is the, the biochemical background of why uh, we don't want to eat too much and we want to eat a little bit just to get the health benefits. So while you're talking about what kind of meat we need to choose, what's the, what does it mean to have a grass-fed, grass-finished meat while we want to go to our sources, understand where we get our meat for? I'm going to get uh, the tray where we're going to add breadcrumbs. And usually the breadcrumbs, I make it out of my old bread, the bread that I bake at home. And then I put it in the food when it, when it dries, like the old meat, I put it in the food processor and, and create the breadcrumbs. In, again, southern Italy, because there was no beef, there was mostly pecorino cheese, the cheese that was made from goats or sheep. And today, actually, I have a, a mixture of Parmesan and Parmigiano e Pecorino here. We're going to add some salt, we're going to add some parsley, and we're going to add some extra virgin olive oil. So I'm going to get my tray to mix everything together. Well, Giovanni is going to tell you about what kind of meat is the good meat to buy. Meat has to be hormone-free, grass-fed, and very importantly, what a lot of people don't realize, it has to be grass-finished. Because if, it's gra if it says grass-fed only, that means they can feed them grass and most of their life they're, they're eating uh, processed feed. While if they're grass-finished, that means they grass or what they normally, what they naturally eat for their whole lot. So you want to make sure the meat is grass fed and grass finished. And uh, very, you know, the, the better the animal is treated, uh, the better the meat. Um, you know, we say that uh, what we want is meat that, that have been treated, the animal's been treated well their whole lives and they have one bad day. And that's uh, the day they, uh, they kill the animal to get the meat. But if on the other hand, in these factory farms where uh, cows and other animals live very crowded together, they're very stressed, their hormone levels are very high, their cortisol levels are high because they're stressed. It's not only a terrible thing for the animal, it's also a terrible thing for the quality of the meat. Very good. So we have here a selection of uh, chicken, beef, and pork. And we're going to create our baked cutlet. So I'm going to put some parchment paper here and try to protect my cutting board from the meat. And, oh, I don't have uh, my meat pounder, batticarne. Um, let's but see if we, we have a, a handy rock, that we, and this is probably the way they did it back in ancient times in Sicily anyway, so this is... It's a good thing I have my rock here, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to start tenderizing. Oh, it works! This is great! This is very... It worked beautifully. So here we go. We're making our cutlet much thinner. La fettina di carne. We're going to mix it with the cheese, the breadcrumbs, salt. We can add some pepper if we want to, parsley. 
if you like some garlic too, that will give some nice flavor to the meat. And here we go. Beautiful cutlets. We're gonna bake it in the oven at 325, 20, 350 degrees for just a few minutes. Um, as you know, we don't want overcooked meat, but always choose the way your family likes it and cook it the way your family likes it. cucina alla tua cucina con amore ciao mm.